working world. And by m and Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Now, here's Eric Allen and Eric Coleman. We are back. Welcome to Inside the Jets. I'm Eric Allen alongside the aforementioned Eric Coleman. We're going to come out sprinting out of the gates tonight because Jets defense alignment Bronson Kafusi is here and he'll join us in our second segment. We're also going to take some calls, 800-919-3776. Inside the Jets is broadcast live from Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits here inside the Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. Eric Coleman, so much has changed since the last time I saw you here at Vanderbilt in December. It's a whole new team right now. Management, uh, head coach, you know, a lot, of, a lot of new blood came in here, and I think it's a great thing. Yeah, it all started with the, the Jets uh, making a coaching change. They hire Adam Gase. And then in June, they follow that up and get a new general manager in Joe Douglas. And then even on the business side, we saw recently – Jaime Elhai, a former intern who I've known for 20 years, take over the president duties. It's awesome. And, you know, it's all moving into the right direction. Uh, I love the energy around the organization. Took a tough L yesterday, but ultimately this team is moving in the right direction, making all the right moves and changes. So I, I think the great things are in store for the Jets. You're a guy who is often around the organization. You come back to the complex. You're out in the community. Do you feel a different vibe? Absolutely. You know, there, there's just a whole new energy here, uh, you know, from Adam Gase to, you know, the new players that the team has signed. Uh, it, it's a great energy. I think the fans are excited about it. I think we saw glimpses uh, of the promise yesterday in, in, in the game, although we, you know, couldn't finish it. But we're a work in progress. I, I think they're making all the right moves and, uh, and changing the culture of the Jets organization. Right. And I'm not going to bury the lead. Bottom line is the Jets came up short in the season opener against the Buffalo Bills. They had a 16-0 lead in the third quarter. Eric, if I told you prior to opening day that the Jets were going to get four takeaways, score eight defensive points, mm. you would have took that and said money in the bank. Oh, money in the bank. I would have took that seven days out of the week. You know, every rule that you have as a, as a player, you know, they say you force, you know, you win the turnover battle, you're going to win the game. You hold a team under 24 points, you're going to win the game. And with all those, all those things happening, you score points on defense, you're going to win the game. When all those things happening, the Jets still fell short. It has to be frustrating. Uh, but going back at, at the film and watching, I'm sure they saw a ton of missed opportunities. Uh, you know, they definitely missed the, the presence of their linebacker. And, uh, Listen, this, this is a learning lesson for this young team. C.J. Mosley, uh, what a start he had to his Jets career. We knew what an accomplished player he was, and he was coming in here to take over Greg Williams' defense, the new Jets defensive coordinator, to be the quarterback of this defense. And he opens up with a pick six, <laughs> and he also had a fumble recovery. He makes a hell of a play in the third quarter where he sprints to prevent a touchdown pass from Josh Allen to John Brown, but in the process injures his groin. When Mosley went down, the tenor of that ball game changed. It did, you know, and CJ uh, did a great job of making a, a big impact early in the game. Uh, he was all over the field with the splash plays, but also in the run game, he was, he was filling in the right spots. He was, he's the leader on the defense, he's the communicator, he's the motivator for, for all the players, gets guys lined up. So when you lose a player like that, the quarterback of your defense, it's going to be tough on the, on the team. You know, you have two young inside linebackers in there calling the game. They're, they're not used to calling the game. Uh, I'm sure that it made an impact on the confidence of the players. And obviously, you know, run fits were different. Yeah. Uh, assignments were different. You didn't have that big-time player out there in the team. He was sorely missed yesterday. Yeah, Inside the Jets is supported by Selective Insurance. Be uniquely insured. So Mosley goes out of the game. Blake Cashman, a fifth-round pick out of Minnesota, enters the lineup. You're doing a lot of shuffling here early in the season because, remember, Avery Williamson was lost in the preseason to a torn ACL. Neville Hewitt is a starter on the inside as well. 
And Adam Gase said today, Hewitt, who, by the way, had one of those four takeaways, came up with an interception. He said he had a hell of a game. And then the Jets are also juggling at outside linebacker across the way from Jordan Jenkins because Brandon Copeland suspended for the first four games of this season. We saw Harvey Lange out there and also Frankie Louvu getting a lot of reps. Yeah, I mean, dealing with adversity is part of playing football. There are going to be highs and lows during the season. There are going to be things that are unexpected that happen. But you have to adjust. You have to adapt. And it's always tough, whether it's on offense or defense, losing a starter in the middle of a game. Yeah. If you lose them, you know, the, the, during the week or prior to that game, you have a whole week to game plan and to understand that, listen, I'm a backup. I'm going to be starting. The whole team gets to, gets to know that this is our guy. We can support him. But in the middle of a game when uh, you're, you're, you're fighting for the win and you lose your player, it's kind of tough to adjust. And, and the Jets showed that. And maybe, maybe showed a little lack of maturity. So I'm going to get to the offense here in a second because – they lamented missed opportunities themselves. But you're a guy who played this game, and you were involved in contests like that one where the defense does a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. But they don't close the door in the fourth quarter. The Bills scored 14 points mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. You talk about run fits. Devin Singletary, uh, give him credit. He's an impressive rookie linebacker, but the run fits weren't there. And that Josh Allen got – Hot in the fourth quarter, and Adam Gase said today, we need improvement from the cornerback position. Yeah, you know, the, the defense, as well as they played, I'm sure in the meeting room today, the coaches were screaming. The, the players were probably very frustrated because they played four quarters of great football, but you have to finish. It doesn't matter. You know, as a defensive player, you can't control what happens on the offense. All you can do is control your assignment, and I'm sure they looked at that film and saw some, some misfits. They saw some missed opportunities in the secondary. They saw the, the cornerbacks playing a little too passive, not okay. playing ag as aggressive as they should. And there was a couple of missed opportunities, some dropped interceptions, some things that this defense could have taken advantage of and ended the game on their own. What happened offensively? The Buffalo Bills, obviously, a very good defense. Uh, their secondary, awfully talented. You think of Tredavious White. Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, those guys disguise awfully well. A lot of pressure packages. They got their hands on a lot of balls uh, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, they, they did a great job of mixing up the blitzes. They brought the safety a couple of times that confused the offensive line, it seemed. Uh, defensively, and in, in the secondary, they were challenging the receivers. Uh, uh, you know, I thought that even though they have a reputation of not giving up big plays, I thought that we probably, the, the Jets team could, should have tried them, taken, them, taken some more shots, take advantage of the extra man in the box when Le'Veon Bell was running the ball so well. I, I think that you have to, no matter if you're going to uh, complete it or not, you have to test the defense because if you don't, the safeties are going to get more aggressive. The corners are going to start jumping routes. You have to find a way during that game to take shots to keep them honest. That's interesting that you say that because Josh Allen had four – turnovers on his resume. Sam Darnold had a clean, a clean stat sheet. He did not turn the football over, but he did say we have to hit on more big plays. And Adam Gase said, hey, receivers got to execute better down the field. And there were a couple opportunities, and we saw that with Robbie Anderson yesterday, where him and Sam maybe just to step off. Otherwise, you get that big play, and things change completely. Absolutely. And, and this is not just on Adam Gase. It's not just on Sam Darnold. The, the offensive line has to do a great job of protecting the quarterback, yep. and the receivers have to get open. You have to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. You have to find those holes in the zones. And I think collectively as a group, they didn't do a good job of doing that. And that's why you, you have the checkdowns to, to, to Crowder. That's why you have the checkdowns to Le'Veon Bell. Uh, because we don't have time and no one's winning their one-on-one -on -one matchups in the secondary. Yeah, Ryan Khalil, the veteran center, he was frank about it. He said that our communication has to be better. Mm -hmm. And he pointed the finger at himself. I like what the Jets did today. Nobody was pointing fingers. <laughs> they were more so putting on themselves that we, gotta play, uh, we have to play better. And uh, with all that being said, when you go watch the film on Monday, you're reviewing what – went wrong, you're correcting those mistakes, and you're moving on, correct? Absolutely. Whether you win the game or you lose the game, 
uh, you have to be subjective. You have to uh, watch that film as hard as it may be. Uh, things may get blown out of proportion a little bit when you lose a game, but ultimately you have to watch your mistakes. You have to correct all the mistakes you made because that next coming opponent is watching and they're looking to see those tendencies. They're going to check your oil. They're going to make sure that you got those things corrected and uh, you have to get them rectified moving forward. All right. Uh, we're going to talk later about Le'Veon Bell because he was outstanding in his first performance with the green and white. We we're off and running here on Inside the Jets. Remember, the call in number here is 800-919-3776, but we're going to come right back with Jets defense alignment, Bronson Kafusi. Ernst & Young LLP is proud to be the exclusive professional business and accounting services sponsor of the New York Jets and MetLife Stadium. All right, four minutes, guys. Official sponsor of the EY Coaches Club. As a global leader in assurance, tax, transaction, and advisory services, the global network of EY firms has better connected consultants who help organizations navigate the transformative age by asking better questions to find answers to some of the world's toughest challenges, all to build a better working world for their people, clients, and communities. We haven't seen a superstar like this in years. You're not kidding, Bob. The people need to know about this standout. Introducing this year's most sought-after rookie, the M&T Bank Jets debit card. New on the scene, this fantastic plastic stands 2.125 inches tall and weighs a lean .2 ounces this small but mighty paying machine is sure to be charging through checkout lines all season long hey jets fans get your hands on the exclusive jets debit card with easy choice checking it's free from a monthly maintenance fee and free from a minimum balance requirement leaving you free from worry you know i have a feeling we're going to be seeing this powerhouse everywhere soon no doubt about it i want one of my team so show your love for the jets and save on fees today Rush to any M&T Bank branch or mtb.com slash jets today. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Other transaction and service fees, including insufficient funds and overdraft fees, may apply to this account. Member FDIC. Every time you close your laptop, a corona gets its line. And every time your to-do list is to do one less thing, a corona gets its line. Every time you press pause. Every time you unwind or lose track of time. A Corona gets its line. And every time your feet are up while the sun goes down, a Corona gets its line. So drop a lime in and find your beach. Please drink responsibly. Corona Extra Beer imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Career success is in your future with a degree from Centenary University. 98% of Centenary alumni are employed or in graduate school nine months after graduation. Hit the ground running with internships and career-focused programs like criminal justice, data analytics, education, equine studies, and sports management. Generous scholarships and grants are available at Centenary University. They're committed to your success. Learn more at www.centenaryuniversity.edu. Hey, Jets fans, it's your chance to score big. Right now, when you open any M&T personal checking account with a Visa debit card, you'll be entered for a chance to win a VIP game day experience, including two tickets and a luxury suite and on-field access after the game. Get all the details at mtb.com slash checking. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. No purchase necessary. Certain restrictions apply, including residential eligibility and account types that apply for automatic entry. Void where prohibited. Visit mtb.com slash Jets rules for important dates and official rules. Member FDIC. One minute. On game day, it takes an entire team to get the job done. Whether it's building a stadium, fixing the roads to get us here, or promoting economic development. The team we rely on is ELEC, the Engineers Labor Employer Cooperative. They promote investments in infrastructure and construction to provide opportunities for developers, union contractors, and members of Operating Engineers Local 825. ELEC, building the infrastructure New Jersey and the Jets rely on. Hey Jets fans, it's your chance to score big. Right now when you open 30 seconds. checking your account with a Visa debit card, you'll be entered for a chance to win a VIP game day experience, including two tickets and a luxury suite and on-field access after the game. Get all the details at mtb.com slash checking. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. 10 seconds. Necessary. Certain restrictions apply, including residential eligibility and account types that apply for automatic entry. Void where prohibited. Visit mtb.com slash Jets rules for important dates and official rules. Member FDIC. Allen back to throw again. Throws one over the middle. It's tipped, and it's intercepted. C.J. Mosley's got it. Runs right to the 10. Five. Touchdown. 
a carom pick. C.J. Mosley takes it to the house, and the Jet defense scores the first points of the season. Welcome back to Inside the Jets. Eric Allen alongside Eric Coleman here at Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits inside the Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. Our player guest segment is presented by M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Without further ado, let's bring in Jets defense alignment, Bronson Kafusi. <laughs> How's it going? What's up, Bronson? Oh, Bronson, man, not much. Bronson, you brought the family out tonight, so uh, you know <laughs> we thank Hillary for being here. And what can you tell us about Tyka? Oh man, he's <laughs> fun. Three months old. He's a giant already. So we're just gonna keep up with him. It, Congratulations. It, is this Thanks. your first? First one. It, yeah, it, first one. It, and what's it like? Oh uh, man, being a new dad. And it's fun. It's a roller coaster. Uh, you know, I couldn't do it without my wife. You know, she's the real champion. So uh, I just you know support her and. Uh, we're just having fun with them every can, single day. Can I ask you this? Did it make it different? Was it different? Is it different going to work now that you have a child? I mean, I would say it is. Yeah, because I remember when I had my baby, it was like, all right, now someone's depending on me. Now it's easier to get up in the morning uh, because someone else is, is counting on me. Did you feel the same way? Yes, yes. It definitely makes you even a better better player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, Bronson, um, I got to imagine – you can't have Tyka go to the stadium just yet. I'm sure he's going to have a couple trips to MetLife in his future, but uh, uh, it, football is in the family. It is. And he'll get a chance to know that pretty soon, right? Definitely. So, uh, I don't know if people know all about your background, but <laughs> can you talk about the football background and take us back to Utah a little bit? Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll give you a little uh, snapshot here. Yeah, football has been a part of my family's life. My dad's a football coach. He... Uh, Played in the NFL for the Eagles. Um, I was born in New Jersey, actually, when he was playing. Uh, I mean, his whole family all played. Uh, he has, you know, six brothers that all played uh, college football. Uh, and uh, he's co he coached for 30 years, 10 years at University of Utah, and then uh, um, 20 years at BYU. And then um, my younger brother plays, uh, or he played there. And then my other brother's there right now. I got about, I mean, all... All my cousins, we all played. Yeah. We've all played in college, and, you know, we've been on different uh, different teams in the NFL. So uh, it's just something that, you know, it's an opportunity for, for my family. So and everyone just tries to take advantage of it. Yeah. So so at what point do, do you start Taika <laughs> in the three-point stance, getting his, <laughs> working on his drills? I already got him there. I already, you know, <laughs> pulled him up and tried to get him in his position. You ready, man? Yeah. Now, wherever the ball is, you just go get it. You go. <laughs> That's awesome. So at, at what point did your dad put you in pads and say, hey, this, this is part of the family business? Oh, man. He, you know, he was so busy coaching. Yeah? You know? Yeah, recruiting, all those things. You know, I, uh, I, didn't, play, I didn't play football until eighth grade. Okay. So, yeah, I did everything else, so, so. – do you remember, though, those early days since your dad was a coach and that's the family business of being around the game and going to practices and going to the locker room? That, oh, definitely, definitely. I remember, I mean, staying after games. I remember, you know, being able, as a kid, I didn't realize I was around some, you know, really good football players like Steve Smith at uh, University of Utah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and even, you know, and at BYU it was awesome. So I was always, I've always been around football, football season. It's, it's always football season at my house. So, <laughs> you know, we're always, we're always either getting ready for the season or in the season. What, but what can you tell us about your younger brother? You just said he plays at BYU, but they played Tennessee. They came up with a great victory, but he, he was uh, involved in an interesting uh, <laughs> altercation, I guess, on Saturday, correct? Man, got to keep your head out of that <laughs> hit, you know, or else, you know, you're not going to be playing the rest of that game. <laughs> so he got ejected for for hitting, leading with his helmet. Leading with his helmet, yeah, right, leading well, with his helmet on the quarterback. So, okay. yeah, uh, uh, that, that's a good teaching moment. So, so oh, Bronson, yeah. growing up, you know, in in college football, uh, growing up in the game of football, who were some of your inspirations besides your father and your uncles? Who were some of your favorite players growing up? Oh man, I love. I mean, obviously Reggie White. Mm -hmm. um, love watching him. Julius Peppers. Love, love watching him. And then you have JJ Watt coming in there. Um, I've always, you know, being a son of a football coach, when I mean, you learn to love to watch film. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, I always, and I, I love, you know, criticism too. I, I, you know, after any game, win or lose, I look forward to seeing the film and seeing the things that I can improve on and get better at and, uh, you know, just being able to really sharpen my blade up for the next game. So uh, speaking to that, after watching the game film, 
The defense was outstanding yesterday, but they left a couple of plays out there. What were some of the things that, uh, that you can improve on as a defense as a whole, uh, looking at the film from last night? Yeah, definitely. I'd say you know, we really have to finish. It yeah. uh, doesn't matter what the score is. Uh, you know, it's, it's a game of four quarters, and if there's time on the clock, we, we need to be at our best and uh, continue to work so that we can you know, close those games out. And I, I feel like as a defense, uh, it's great to be a part of a defense that – you know, wants to be great, has that desire, and is willing to put the work in to, uh, to achieve that. And so watching the film today was, you know, a great opportunity for us to see, wow, we still have so much more that we can improve on and, and really even execute at a higher level. Bronson, what has clicked here uh, for you with the New York Jets? Because this is a very deep defensive line. You're talking about Leonard Williams, Steve McClendon. They draft Quinn and Williams. Henry Anderson ties for the team lead in sacks last year. Nathan Shepard's still on this team. For Lorenzo, uh, Lorenzo Faducasi is on this team as well. But you have made yourself part of the defensive line rotation, and you got in close to 30 snaps yesterday. Yeah. Um, you know, great defensive line like you just said. Uh, you know, for me, uh, I just take it day by day. Uh, I, I love being able to work and compete and uh, being able to be in a room with guys that are the same, uh, you know, it has helped me to elevate my game and, uh, you know, each day to, you know, climb a little higher, get, get a little better each day. And so it's been, it's been great for everyone to, you know, pull out each other's, really pull out each other's best. How have you developed most significantly maybe since – you were drafted by the Baltimore Ravens a couple of years ago in the third round. Man, I would say um, just understanding the game at a different level. Yeah. Uh, you know, being able to, you know, have the game slow down and uh, uh, really become even. I thought I was a student of the game, but I feel like you know, and I'm I'm a, I'm more of a student of the game now, and I'm just continuing to just push that. Uh, push that envelope, push that button more and more and more. So, you know, from last year, uh, going into this year in the offseason, what were some of the things that you worked on as a player individually uh, that, that can help you elevate and that help you make this team and be a, a key contributor? Yeah. For me, I would say uh, technique was, is huge. And it's always been big for me. Uh, but um, I felt like I honed in even, even more to really get into, like, the details and really refine uh, my work and – uh, being able to do it at a consistent level, at a high level, is has been key for me. And then also, I mean, with that, there's a lot of things that fall into that, but I would say just being able to execute my technique at a high level time and time again. Bronson, can you take us into the meeting room? What's it like being coached up by Greg Williams? Uh, he is a character. He's got a lot of experience. He is funny, but he's going to get after you. Oh, yeah, I love it. I, uh, man, in the meeting room, he's, he's great. I mean, uh, he gets after you, and, uh, you know, you, you get after him, and it's just, it's, I mean, any player that wants to be, uh, you know, really, really great loves, his, loves the way he does things because he's going to push you. Yeah. He's going to help you to reach your potential. Um, there's... There's nothing more he wants than for you to be the best that you can be. And so, you know, for me, I'm the type of person, you know, personally where I'm, I'll do whatever it takes, you know, whatever it takes. You know, whatever you say, <laughs> jump. He says jump. I say how high. You know, I'm willing to do whatever it takes so that I can, you know, be, be that player that I know I can be and he knows I can be. He says two speeds, walk through and fast, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, um, and he preaches for you guys to run to the ball after every rep you take in practice. I think that carried over into game actions. You got the 2019 season underway with the four takeaways. Definitely. No, yeah, you definitely, you know, you want to have guys around the ball 24-7, and uh, that's something that, you know, that he preaches, and, uh, you know, we go out there and get those guys around the ball because you never know when that ball might slip out or, you know, a, a guy might make a mistake or someone might get a hand on it, and all of a sudden it's in your lap, so you got to be ready. But it's something that's drilled. Uh, you guys take time each practice to, to go over ball security for the offense and obviously getting the ball out for the defense. Oh, definitely. Yeah, every, every day we're constantly, you know, training ourselves to take that ball away, take it away. Every, 
And when we go up against the offense, you know, we always want to practice that as well. You know, it helps, helps both of us. Yep. So, Bronson, you, you, know, you talked about being a student of the game. You know, you watched the film, made the corrections. At what point do you get into Cleveland, and have you started getting into what Cleveland does? You know, I, I mean, it's a 24-hour 20, rule. You know, you can't, uh, you no matter if you win or lose, you know, you can't let your highs get too high and your lows get too low because it's time to work again. And so, you know, for me, um, that's really 24 hours. After 24 hours, I'm, I'm looking ahead to that next, to that next battle. And so, for me, um, you know, I, you got to prepare always uh, and take it serious. And time is, everyone has the same amount of time every week. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I try to jump on it as soon as, you know, as soon as I can. So I've already, you know, kind of delved into Cleveland a little bit. <laughs> I, I got to ask you about your defensive captain. Well, you got three of them in Jamal Adams, C.J. Mosley, and Steve McClendon. But let's go back and, and, and talk about Mosley. He was fantastic yesterday. He's the quarterback of this defense. Uh, what does that specifically mean in terms of getting you guys lined up, uh, you know, calling out checks at times when he sees something offensively? And just what did it mean to you guys how he played and then how deflating was it to see him go down? Man, you know, CJ is such a you know, phenomenal player, um, leader. Uh, he's... Uh, you know, er everything you want in that position and, uh, you know, for him to go down, it's hard, but it's really next man up. Yeah. And uh, in the middle of the game, you know, it's, it's always hard, but hey, you know, we got to look forward and get ready because that ball's about to, you know, be snapped again and you got to be able to move forward. But he's, he's great. He's fun to play with and, um, you know, he's just really a great, great leader of this defense. Eric asked you before about the Cleveland Browns. What do you think about playing in primetime next week and, and how charged up it's going to be at MetLife as you guys try to even that record at one-on-one? -on -one? Oh, man, it's going to be awesome. I, I know it's going to be, you know, really electric. And uh, for me as a player, you, you just can't wait for that type of, uh, you know, moment, situation. And, uh, you know, just as soon as that, that game ended, I was already ready to play the next one. I'm yeah. like, let's, let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to come back here and let's go again because I, you know, I want to, you know, didn't, didn't end the way we wanted it to. Sure. So you just, you just want to get back to work. You want to, uh, you know, learn and you want to be back out here. Well, you know, after this game, you're about playing Monday night. Everybody's going to watch this game. How many text messages are you going to get from your, your uncles, your father, your brother? Uh, what, what kind of, what kind of critique, criticism do they give you after games? Oh, man, you, I'll get a lot now because I've got a lot of people <laughs> who know, know this game and yeah. have been following me. And, uh, yeah, they're going to be breaking know. They're gonna be breaking you down. You better make sure you're on your technique. I, I, bet, <laughs> I better be on it. I, you're right. I better be on it or else I'm going to have you know, a book to read yeah. after. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, continued success to you, Hillary, and little Tyco over there. I see him moving. He's rocking a little bit. And uh, Bronson, thank you so much for stopping by. We're going to come right back here on Inside the Jets, 800-919-3776. We haven't seen a superstar like this in years. You're not kidding, Bob. The people need to know about this standout. Introducing this year's most sought-after rookie, the M&T Bank Jets debit card. New on the scene, this fantastic plastic stands 2.125 inches tall and weighs a lean 0.2 ounces. This small but mighty paying machine is sure to be charging through checkout lines all season long. Hey, Jets fans, get your hands on the exclusive Jets debit card with Easy Choice Checking. It's free from a monthly maintenance fee and free from a minimum balance requirement, leaving you free from worry. You know, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing this powerhouse everywhere soon. No doubt about it. I want one on my team. So show your love for the Jets and save on fees today. Rush to any M&T Bank branch or mtb.com slash Jets today. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Other transaction and service fees, including insufficient funds and overdraft fees, may apply to this account. Member FDIC. Ernst & Young LLP is proud to be the exclusive professional business and accounting services sponsor of the New York Jets and MetLife Stadium. Teaming with them as the official sponsor of the EY Coaches Club. As a global leader in assurance, tax, transaction, and advisory services, the global network of EY firms has better connected consultants who help organizations navigate the transformative age by asking better questions to find answers to some of the world's toughest challenges, all to build a better working world for their people, clients, and communities. Hi, football fans. This is Director Jared Maples with the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness. 
It's our mission to protect New Jersey with our federal, state, and local partners. Of course, nobody knows our communities better than the people who live there. That's where you can help. If you see something that you suspect is out of the ordinary, report it. Together, we can keep our state safe. Remember, if you see something, say something. To learn more about what to look for, visit njhomelandsecurity.gov. Career success is in your future with a degree from Centenary University. 98% of Centenary alumni are employed or in graduate school nine months after graduation. Hit the ground running with internships and career-focused programs like criminal justice, data analytics, education, equine studies, and sports management. Generous scholarships and grants are available at Centenary University. They're committed to your success. Learn more at www.centenaryuniversity.edu. This here is the story of Lawrence, who always wanted to play pro football. His parents supported his love of the game, sent him to special camps, and then in college, pro scouts came to a bunch of games where Lawrence was playing the trumpet at halftime. Yeah, Lawrence was never that good at football, gave up by the time he got to college. But he also learned how Geico could save him a lot of money on car insurance, so he switched and saved. So, this here story has a happy ending after all. The Michael K Show is on. One minute. Give up after one loss. Nobody had any delusions the Giants were going to win that game anyway. The Cowboys are much better. I'm anticipating this to be a losing season. But as Eli gets his starts, you can also get Daniel Jones in meaningful games. I want him to face the Bears. I want him to face the Patriots. These are games that likely the Giants aren't going to win. And if they're down three scores in the fourth quarter of those games, I want to see him play. Because next year, he's not going to be on scholarship. Don't miss the Michael K Show. Weekdays at 3 on 98.7 ESPN. Introducing the all-new ESPN app, now with ESPN Plus. With Plus, it means you get more, more of the sports, teams, and leagues you love. More knockouts, hole-in-ones, grand slams, more touchdowns, hat tricks, and goals. And more doesn't stop there, because with Plus, you get more films and shows, like the premiere of Detail and the entire 30 for 10 seconds. With all this more, you're going to need more time. Sorry, families and loved ones. The all-new ESPN app. Download now and sign up for ESPN Plus today. Frank Gore, the lone setback, lines up behind Josh Allen under center. Jets early third quarter, 6-0 lead, handoff Gore, runs left, met right at the line of scrimmage, behind the line of scrimmage, right at the goal line. The Jets think they've got a safety. They do! The Jets drop Frank Gore at the goal line! Welcome back to Inside the Jets. We're supported by M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Jets reward members. Don't forget to enter code JETLIFE into your Jet Rewards code portal during the show to earn 100 points. That's Jet Life. Eric Coleman and Eric Allen here at Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits inside the Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. Uh, we're going to take some calls here in just a moment, 800-919-3776. We were just joined by Bronson Kafusi. What I like about the Jets uh, defensively, it starts up front mm -hmm. and... Kafusi is going to play an important part because he's a, he's a rotational player, and that's going to keep guys fresh in the fourth quarter when you have to get after the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, he plays with a high motor, and you need guys that, that give that full effort every single play and, and keep that pressure on the offensive line. I, I think you're going to see him, just like you did Henry Anderson last year, yeah. develop into one of those players that's now he's being disruptive. Now he's getting into the backfield, making tackles for loss, getting hits on quarterbacks, and that's just going to make this group so much better. Yeah, uh, injury of, on the injury front for the Jets, uh, C.J. Mosley uh, suffered the groin injury. Uh, Adam Gates doesn't think he's going to practice Wednesday. Groin injuries can be tricky sometimes. Mm -hmm. You don't want to rush a guy back, but at the same time, he's such an integral part of your team so you got to find a balance there heading into Monday Night Football yeah it is a fine line especially with the guy like CJ who is the quarterback he gets everyone lined up and, and it's uh you, you don't want to rush it because that thing can nag you all year so yeah. you want to take your time with it as much as his presence will be can be missed out on the practice field or on the on the game field you want to make sure that he's close to 100 percent when he comes back yeah and rookie Quinnen Williams he has an ankle sprain again he probably won't practice on Wednesday either where the Jets have an advantage this week is that they get the extra day mm -hmm. here early in the season of Monday Night Football. So we're going to take some calls now. 800-919-3776. Let's go to Ira. 
What's up, Byron? Hey, EA. EA, Eric, what's going on, guys? How are you? What's up, buddy? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. So, like you said, this is the show, first show of the year. Uh, I totally agree with you. A lot of changes. I think the Jets are really good hands uh, across the board, coaching, personnel, and, you know, new uh, business uh, in place. But getting to yesterday's loss, unfortunately, it just didn't work out the way we were hoping it was going to work out. Um, you know, like most NFL games, it comes down to a play or two that makes a difference. And, and whether it was Marcus May dropping the interception before it led to the Buffalo Bills field goal, uh, you know, and Henry Anderson, the penalty was very unfortunate because Mosley got hurt on the next play. But pretty much they, they were in command of that game. Yeah. I, I, and, you know, everybody's pointing into kickers and all this stuff. To me, you know, I, I think Bell, Crowder, and Mosley just tremendous out of the box. But the bottom line is, yeah, the offensive line came up short. And when you when you get four turnovers in the first half of a ball game and you don't put a team away, this is what could happen. Unfortunately, they're going to learn the hard way. And hopefully they regroup for the Browns. And uh, it's going to be a tough game Monday night, two 0-1 teams. But uh, you got to regroup and uh, you got to get one in the win column this week. And hopefully they can just put this behind them. Yeah, thanks for the call, Ira. I totally agree. Sometimes it can... You know, the talent discrepancy each week in this league, it's not much. It's a small margin. It really is. You go up and down, and you look at the rosters, and you look at the talent, and you say, well, that's a good team. You're facing a good team this week. You're facing a good team next week. goes on and on and on. So you do have to capitalize on opportunities, and we've been talking about it all night, that when you get four takeaways, you score eight defensive points, you got to win. Yeah, you do, yeah, you do plus, have to win. plus four in the turnover margin, you, you just got to win. Yeah, you, you do have to win, but just like Bronson said, you have to finish as well. Yeah. You know, you, you can't just say, you know, we got four turnovers in this first half. Uh, we scored eight points. It's a wrap. You know, sometimes the defense has to pick up when the offense is slacking because it's vice versa. You know, that's why it's a team game. Sometimes the special teams may pick up. So uh, the defense, you know, they're the strength of this team. They have to continue to press on until the offense starts to click fully. And, and then – that's when you start to see the offense put up the points, and you'll see some of the big plays from the defense. All right, let's go to Richard in Manhattan. So, hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Before I get to my main point, the uh, Le'Veon Bell two-point conversion. What great play in NFL history did that play remind you of? Huh. How about 1982 championship game? Montana to Dwight Clark over Emerson Wolf. <laughs> nice. All right. The, the catch. I, I got. I, I know the catch. I gotta go look. Okay. Uh, I gotta go look back at that. But uh, yeah, that, uh, exact kind of play, fellas. The only thing was Donald wasn't rolling to his right. But okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Here's what I saw yesterday. I saw the Jets with home field advantage. Yep. I saw the Jets with the better quarterback, the better running back, the better wide receiver. The better defensive player, a gift safety, a two-point conversion, four to nothing on turnovers, and a 16 to nothing lead, and they lost the game. So to me, Adam Gaze was out coached. Game one. That's all I saw. All I heard last year was Todd Bowles was not this, was not that, was not this, was not that. Last year in game one. Sam Donald looked like a 10-year pro. Yesterday, he looked like a rookie quarterback with a supposed offensive guru. Now, I'm only basing this on one game this year and one game that I saw with Sam, with uh, Todd Bowles last year, opening day against Detroit. And believe me, uh, Adam Gase came up short. He should have blamed himself and only himself after the game. That's it, fellas. I'm out. <laughs> uh, listen, Richard, I love your passion. Oh, yeah. I don't necessarily agree with you, mm -hmm. but your emotions there, and you want this team to be good, no doubt about it. By the way, Sam Darnold's first pass in the National Football League was returned the other way mm -hmm. for a touchdown by the Detroit Lions, and the Jets were down 7 nothing before people had gotten into their seats in Detroit. Also, that was a takeaway affair where the Jets capitalized on – the Lions' mistakes last year and won a convincing victory. But I'm glad you brought up last year because everybody said what the Jets were going to be after hammering the Lions, and the Jets ended up being 4-12. and So 
the lesson I'm taking from last year is, you know what? It's week one. And a lot of people are going to make proclamations right now. Who's an elite team? Who's a playoff team? Who's a team to be reckoned with? You got to let it play out just a little bit. Oh, by the way, your opponent Monday night is the Cleveland Browns. Most people I heard in the offseason talk about, well, the Cleveland Browns, they're a contender for the AFC title. You know what they did in week one? They lost by 30 points at home. Are you going to write off the Cleveland Browns right now? I'm not ready to. No, you know, and I think the important thing to realize is it's a one game. You know, yes, it's a, it's a game that uh, the Jets need to win. You know, it's a home game. It's a division game. Uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, on paper, they, they're outmatched the, they outmatch the Buffalo Bills. But ultimately, when you lose a football game, it's coaches and players. You know, I, I don't necessarily think that Adam Gase got out coach. Adam Gase didn't drop any interceptions. Adam Gase didn't blow any coverages. He, he didn't give up any touchdowns. You know, it's the players. You know, and the players have to learn the finish, and they're going to have to learn from this. Uh, it was a great start. Great start for the defense. The offense was slow. I, I think that it's the first game. The first game this offensive line played together. Yeah. It's the first game Adam Gates has called a full game with Sam Darnold. I think that you just – it's a starting point. You continue to grow from it. And I think that you'll see them open up the playbook, score more big plays, and Sam Darnold's just going to get better. Inside the Jets is presented by EY, Building a Better Working World. You can call us at 800 919 Three seven seven six. Eric Allen and Eric Coleman here at Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits. Le'Veon Bell was fantastic in his return. I know it says 92 total yards. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm not really worried about the number. I went back and looked at the film today. He was terrific. Vision, patience, and he finishes every time he touches the ball. He has a great motor and just a fantastic player to watch. I mean, you mentioned it. He has the patience, but he also does a great job of setting up blocks. You know, sometimes you'll be watching him go through a hole, and you're like, why is he hesitating? Why did he jump inside? As soon as he jumped inside, there's somebody blocking him from outside, and then he bounces out. He does a great job of, of anticipating blocks. He knows where, where his, his defenders are coming from. Just a special player. I think that he showed yesterday he has no rust. He's an elite player. Uh, he's the same player he was back when he was playing in Pittsburgh. And I think as the offense grows, you'll see him start to get more carries. He'll, he'll get 100 yards rushing. He'll have 50, 60 yards receiving and be an even bigger part of the offense. And we know the Jets had only one offensive touchdown. That came on a third down in the third quarter. But Le'Veon Bell is a special player because most running backs can't catch that ball. Mm -hmm. Thrown a little bit low by Sam Darnold. Not, not, not a bad pass, mm -hmm. but that just showcases what kind of hands he has. Absolutely. I mean, he does a great job out of the backfield. And, you know, he's a mismatch against linebackers. And, and it's tough. You know, I, I know that they, you know, Adam Gase and the offense, they want to get Ty Montgomery more involved in the offense. But when you think about those two players in the backfield, two guys that do a great job running in between the tackles, two guys that can run routes or mismatches for any linebackers or any nickelback uh, that they go against, it's going to be dangerous, and I'm excited to see what Adam Gase does with these two players, along with all the other weapons. Quincy Anunwa getting him involved. Robbie Anderson taking shots with him. It's going to be fun, and I think that you'll start to see that thing open up. And, and oh, by the way, Chris Herndon is suspended for the first four mm -hmm. games, so you're adjusting on the run. This offense is going to look a lot different when Herndon is back as well. Let's get to a couple more calls. Buddha, what's going on tonight? Hey, what's going on, guys? Listen, um, I know Richard is a little boom bastic, but he wasn't wrong with what he was saying. I called Anita and I called Chris um, in the morning before the game, and I said I was concerned about the coaching because McDermott, gives, he does a lot with less. And um, the Jets and the Bills, they're similar in talent. The Jets might even have a little bit more talent. But Adam Gase, if you notice, even when he was in Miami, he has a problem going away from the running game. The best player on that field was Le'Veon Bell for either team yesterday. And he went away from him in the fourth quarter when we need to go to him, huh? Thanks for the call, Buddha. Um, listen, I think there is going to be a feeling out process, a learning process. That's the first time that Bell suited up for the Jets. And Gase has said this is the most talented running back I've ever coached. Mm -hmm. And he's coached some good ones. Yeah, he's coached some great running backs. And, and, and Buddha's right. Le'Veon was the best player on the field yesterday. Yes, uh, yes you want to get him more carries. And I, and I think that 
that's part of the maturation process, even as a coach. You know, you go back and you correct your mistakes just like the players do, and I think that they'll see that Le'Veon should be featured more. But they also see that there's a lot more other things that they could have done. Uh, you know, the receivers need to win their matchups on the perimeter. Uh, there's a lot more. If you start to, to take deep shots, yeah. now you loosen up those safeties. Now it's even easier for Le'Veon to, get the, to break off the runs, get into the secondary and make big plays. But it's a team effort. You know, it's, it's going to take something from everybody uh, to go out there and, and win these games. And we haven't even talked about the kicking game. Because yeah, uh, that, yeah. that probably was the difference between the Jets winning this football game. Not the offense, uh, not the defense. So you're going to drop this right now? As we I, 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 I got to drop we, it. We, we go into a commercial break. It's been heavy on my heart. We'll no, talk about we're, it some more. We're going we're to talk about it some more, and we're going to get to some good calls. This hour's flying by. 800-919-3776. We'll come right back here on Inside the Jets. Ernst & Young LLP is proud to be the exclusive professional business and accounting services sponsor of the New York Jets and MetLife Stadium. Teaming with them as the official sponsor of the EY Coaches Club. As a global leader in assurance, tax, transaction, and advisory services, the global network of EY firms has better connected consultants who help organizations navigate the transformative age by asking better questions to find answers to some of the world's toughest challenges, all to build a better working Close your laptop, a Corona gets its line. And every time your to-do list is to do one less thing, a Corona gets its line. Every time you press pause, every time you unwind or lose track of time, a Corona gets its line. And every time your feet are up while the sun goes down, a Corona gets its line. So drop a line in and find your beach. Please drink responsibly. Corona Extra Beer imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. We haven't seen a superstar like this in years. You're not kidding, Bob. The people need to know about this standout. Introducing this year's most sought-after rookie, the M&T Bank Jets debit card. New on the scene, this fantastic plastic stands 2.125 inches tall and weighs a lean .2 ounces. This small but mighty paying machine is sure to be charging through checkout lines all season long. Hey Jets fans, get your hands on the exclusive Jets debit card with Easy Choice Checking. It's free from a monthly maintenance fee and free from a minimum balance requirement, leaving you free from worry. You know, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing this powerhouse everywhere soon. No doubt about it. I want one on my team. So show your love for the Jets and save on fees today. Rush to any M&T branch or mtb.com slash Jets today. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Other transaction and service fees, including insufficient funds and overdraft fees, may apply to this account. Member FDIC. Hey, Jets fans, it's your chance to score big. Right now, when you open any M&T personal checking account with a Visa debit card, you'll be entered for a chance to win a VIP game day experience, including two tickets and a luxury suite and on-field access after the game. Get all the details at mtb.com slash checking. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. No purchase necessary. Certain restrictions apply, including residential eligibility and account types that apply for automatic entry. Void where prohibited. Visit mtb.com slash Jets rules for important dates and official rules. Member FDIC. An interesting creature inhabits the flat, arid plains of many an automobile dashboard, the bobblehead. It's most agreeable and will nod along to anything, despite having no brain function. But when the bobblehead hears how GEICO not only saves people money, but also gives them access to licensed agents 24-7 online and over the phone, he'll nod even more vigorously because he knows you should switch. Because yes, switching to GEICO is a no-brainer. Easy, bobblehead, easy. You're going to get whiplash. Hi, football fans. This is Director Jared Maples with the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness. It's our mission to protect New Jersey with our federal, state, and local partners. Of course, nobody knows our communities better than the people who live there. That's where you can help. If you see something that you suspect is out of the ordinary, report it. Together, we can keep our state safe. Remember, if you see something, say something. To learn more about what to look for, visit njhomelandsecurity.gov. 30 seconds. On game day, it takes an entire team to get the job done. Whether it's building the stadium, fixing the roads to get us here, or promoting economic development, the team we rely on is ELEC, the engineer's labor employer cooperative. They promote investments in infrastructure and construction to provide opportunities seconds. developers, union contractors, and members of Operating Engineers Local 825. ELEC, building the infrastructure New Jersey and the Jets rely on. 
Empty backfield. Darnold takes the shotgun. Snap drops back. Looks left. Slings one left. Caught right at the goal line. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Le'Veon Bell. His first touchdown is a Jet. The first touchdown of the season for the Jet offense. And they've got a 14-0 lead. Remember, Jets fans, you can stream inside the Jets live through the Jets app presented by m t Bank. Go to the App Store or Google Play now and search official New York Jets. Eric Allen and Eric Coleman here at the Wyndham Hamilton Park. Wow, the, the phone lines are lighting up. Uh, uh -oh. Alan Hahn is following us here on ESPN Radio. But uh, let's take a couple more calls, and then I want to do a quick preview of Monday night. Let's go to Dan. Hey, uh, hey, Eric. Hey, Eric. How are you? Great. I, I've been a diehard Jet fan for 40 years. I've had season tickets for 20. I was at the game yesterday. You know, I'm not going to blame it on the kicking. That, that was atrocious, but that wasn't it. My question is, is when do we say Adam Gase is who he is? He was a subpar offensive, uh, had subpar offenses in, in Miami. I know it was one game, and you're going to say it was one game. But, you know, when he was hired, there was a lot of nervousness amongst Jet Twitter that his offenses in Miami were really sluggish. And what I saw yesterday wasn't electric and really didn't impress. So how concerned should we be that this is a pattern that we've seen before and will continue in the future? Thanks for the call, Dan. Uh, here's what I would say about Gase. In his first year in Miami, he went 10-6. and six. The Dolphins made the playoffs. The second season, he did not have his starting quarterback, a former college receiver, Ryan Tannehill. So uh, they went to the reserves there, had to bring Jake Cutler up. And then last December, that team, who was not overly talented, they were 7-6. and six. Um, So in his three years as, uh, as coach, the Miami Dolphins, they did some good things down there. And... Gase, if you talk to people throughout the league and you think about what he did as an offensive coordinator in Denver, now a lot of people will say, okay, Peyton Manning was there. What? Also, Chicago, this guy knows offensive football. I think it's a matter of time before things click for this Jets offense because he probably would tell you, in terms of being a head coach in this league, this is the most offensive talent he's had. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to – there's no need to sit up here and defend Adam Gase right now. You know, I, th I think he's an excellent coach. He's, he's the right coach for this team, and he's going to help Sam Darnold mature as a quarterback. Uh, it, it, the kicking game is a part of it. Yeah, just to be frank about it, if you make an extra point, which is – that's an automatic for an NFL kicker, it's a tie game. You make that field goal, you're, you're winning the game. Yes, there were plays out there that, that were left. You know, there was, there was some interceptions dropped. There were some missed assignments. Uh, you know, some guys l miscontained uh, and, and let the quarterback get out of the pocket. You know, there was a lot of things that happened in, a fo in the course of a football game that result in the win or the loss. But ultimately, listen, this is a one-point game. If the Jets win by one, now we're praising the team. Sure. Now it's a whole different story. And, and, I, and I think that everyone's jumping to conclusions a little bit. Yes, it was a slow start. It was not the offensive performance that the Jets wanted. But I don't think it's time right now to question the leadership on this team. Yeah. It, it's way too early for that. There's no doubt about that. And like you said, hey, you hit Robbie Anderson on that pass. Or one of the two down the stretch. And you win the game. Then everybody's talking about the resiliency of this team. So things can change fast in the National Fo Football League. Um, we'll have to see what happens Monday night against the Cleveland Browns. They're going to be a desperate team themselves. Let's move on to Dan. What's up, Dan? Hey, How you doing? guys. What's going on? I love this show. Thanks, buddy. Listen, you know who I'm most pissed at? It's not Adam Gase. It's not Sam Darnold. It's not the defense. It's not even the kicker. I'm pissed at the fans. The New York Jet fans, all of a sudden, they start jumping ship when, they're, when they lose one game. Come on now. Support your team. This is one game. How many times in history does it have to repeat itself? 98, we were 0-2, started off. We went to the championship game. 2010, started off 0-1, and we lost almost the same fashion against the Ravens but by one point. And then what? In 0-2, we started 2-5, and and we won the division. Jet fans, grow a pair. And pull for your team. You know what? The sky is not falling down for me. I'm a big time Jets fan. Okay. And I believe in my team. Thanks, Dan. Well, he said it. Dan's keeping the faith. 
I mean, I mean, listen, you can't jump to conclusions off of one game. I know it's frustrating. It's a home game. It's a terrible loss. Listen, you lose to the Buffalo Bills, a team, when you look at the schedule for the Jets, th- this, may, this may bite them at the end of the year. But at the same time, you cannot panic on your team. This, is, this team is full of talent. It has a great quarterback, a phenomenal defense. Yes, there's some discrepancies uh, that happened in the game. But it's the first game of the season. It's one game out of 16. Forget it. Let's clear that game. They're going to improve. And let's, continue, let's judge the whole body of work, not just one game. I, I would like to think of this as an evolution. We just watched Le'Veon Bell, who still is one of the top offensive weapons in football, make his debut with the Jets. He was fantastic yesterday. Mm-hmm. Jameson Crowder, yeah, would you ha- like to have more yards in a perfect world? Yeah, the Jets have talked about making some more big plays. But he did have 14 catches, so that tells me that there's some synergy there between him and his quarterback already. Robbie Anderson, Quincy Anunwa, those guys can play. They've made plays in the National Football League. Okay? The offensive line, that's the first time They took one snap together in game action. They didn't play one play together in the preseason. The defense comes up with four takeaways, and they score eight points. They lost. They got to figure something out with the kicking situation. No doubt about that. I can't. We only have an hour on this show because we could talk about the kicking situation for more than an hour itself. We got about 55 seconds left. The Browns. Expectations. I, I expect- what do you think about this matchup? Because this <laughs> Cleveland team smarting from a loss. Do you think yeah. Jets fans are upset? It's going to be a fierce game. It's going to be a great matchup. Uh, Cleveland has a great pass rush. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for the offensive line to see if they can protect Darnold. Miles and, Garrett, and Olivia Miles Vernon. Garrett, yeah, they got some, some ball players yeah, over the, there. And you got to watch out for Ward in the secondary. And in and, and the, and the Jets secondary, they're going to have some big time challenges with Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry. Uh, tight, you know, they have great tight ends. So Nick, it, it's Nick Chubb be, running the ball well. It's going to be a good challenge. And, and I'm excited to see how the Jets respond at home, uh, you know, in the prime time. Yeah. And remember, this is a matchup of the number one overall pick in the 2018 draft. Baker Mayfield, the number three overall pick in the 2018 draft. Sam Darnold, until next week, we're out. Alan Hahn Show is up next. This here is the story of Lawrence. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 